Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to overlay GPX data onto your videos. Uh, so today we're going to be using a program called Verb Edit. Uh, let's go to Firefox, I'll show you where to get it. So Verb is an old, old uh, Garmin application. Uh, you might have heard of it. it. It doesn't have full functionality anymore, but it, it, it gets the job done. So here we are, um, you just type in verb edit in Google, and then it's the top, top one. You got it for Windows and for Mac. Uh, so just um, click on whichever one you have, Windows or Mac, and then it'll download and then go through the install process. Once verb is installed, um, you go, you open verb, and then you want to, whoops. You open verb, okay. <laughs> you open verb and then you create a new video. Um, we're gonna call this one GPX test, or demo, I mean, excuse me. GPX demo, we'll create that video. And then once your video is created, you need to import the clips. So click import other, uh, since you don't have a verb to start importing. <laughs> Unless you do, then go with that method. Um, so I already have the video lined up here. Just open it, import only, and it'll import the clip, and then it'll start optimizing. And what optimizing is, is it's just uh, downscaling your video for easier playback during, uh, during editing in Verb. Um, once you export the video from Verb, it'll be back in 4K or whatever original resolution you had had recorded it in. Uh, so I'm going to let this cook for a little while, and I'll be back to show you how to do the rest. Alright everyone, we are back on Verb Edit, <coughs> and now I'm going to show you how to utilize your GPX data and have it display on your videos. Um, so first, what we need to do is go to Gmetrics. And then you go to data, and you want to import your G metrics, uh, which is GPX. It's just GPX file, uh, and so you have previous imports here. Um, if you're importing a new file, uh, go to on my computer, and then browse, and then uh, wherever your GPX data is located, you click on that, and then click open. I'm not gonna click open because I already have it though. Uh, so you select data, uh, in my case the data for this ride is morning ride, um, so we're going to use this log. <laughs> and also if you notice you can like select what kind of data to include and exclude. Um, right now we got everything. Uh, so now that you have your data, we're still in the Gmetrics tab. Um, if you go through these different panels, you got your templates which is uh, just pre-made stuff, pretty cool, nice and easy. You can also save, like build and save templates, like in my case I have, I've built this one um, out of, indi uh, I built this one based off a, a, based off the grounded template, and then I rearranged it and added some things to it to make it my own. Um, I felt that was the easiest starting point. So you got templates, um, stuff like that, you know, pretty cool. Uh, or you can do individual gauges, just click on gauges and click on data type. And then select the type of uh, data you want to display. So let's do calculated 2D speed. And then you got a bunch of different, bunch of different uh, speedometers and stuff here. Uh, and all you have to do is drag and drop it onto the, onto the um, screen. Um, so yeah, that's pretty easy, and then you can change the appearance of things, uh, like you got accent one, accent two, background, let's give it a background, see what happens, green background, yeah, accent two, I don't know, yellow, accent one, pink, it's whatever, um, whatever, uh, that's actually a nice co color combo, I like that. <laughs> Um, make it your own. That, that's what I'm trying to say here, is make it your own, make it beautiful. Um, as far as design cues go, like, or design theory, try not to make it too cluttered or too, uh, 
what's the word, um, maximalist, I guess, like, you don't want too much going on, you don't want to take away from the, the video you're, uh, you're displaying, you know, um, so I'm gonna put my own template back on, okay, yeah, nice, and that Garmin verb, uh, watermark went away, thankfully. Uh, I hope that doesn't show up in export. I haven't quite ex I haven't exported a video yet. So um, once I export the video, I'll let you know if the watermark still appears or not. It, it shouldn't though. Um, okay, so our template's set now. Uh, now we have to um, get to a more the more difficult part, which is syncing data. So you want to click. You're still in your G metrics panel. You want to click on the data tab. <clears throat> and then go down to Gmetric Sync. Uh, and what you're gonna do is ignore the script error. All this is saying is that um, the scripts being used to hit the uh, Google Maps API, they, they're broken. It's broken because Google Maps updated their API, but the developer of this software has not updated it since 2018. Uh, so yeah, that's the, that's the catch-22 right here. Um, it's free software, but yeah, this is what you're gonna have to deal with. Um, so just click yes or no or whatever. Uh, we're actually gonna go back really quick. Click cancel. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to figure out um, how to sync your data. Um, all right, so the video is playing, right? You want to get it to um, like a very noticeable turn in the map uh, so we're gonna we're gonna scrub to here to this corner right here uh, it's a very prominent corner uh, so just follow the dot until you get close and then as you can see the turn for that corner is coming up right now but on the map it says I'm still like kind of far behind so how do we how do we sync this how do we sync this without uh, having a map preview available to us. Well, uh, this isn't exactly accurate, but it's pretty dang close. Um, so once I hit the turn, I'm gonna start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and let's stop it at 30. Uh, so, there 30 seconds have gone by where I made that turn and the map had to catch up. So how do we fix that? Uh, click close up here in the top, and then let's go back to Gmetric Sync. Um, and okay, now that we have our uh, split time or our difference, um, we can uh, we can sort of like fudge fudge around right here. Um, if you take the slider, I said 30 seconds, right? So let's get as close as possible to 30 seconds. Uh, let's do 29 seconds. Okay, uh, click done. And now we're gonna pop the full screen back open. Um, and let's run it back. And let's see how close we are now being synced up. And just let this run a little bit. And then take a swig of coffee. So here comes the turn, and you can see on the dot, we're already pretty synced up, right? Watch the compass, the compass is, is going to turn, so we're a little, we're still a little far behind here, uh, by a few seconds I'd say, let's, uh, let's double check that, uh, let's watch the compass now. Uh, the compass should be making a sharp directional change when we hit this turn. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right, that's about thirteen seconds. Um, let's see. Let's uh, let's go back. And let's go to Geometric Sync again. And right now we're at 29. And I said about 13 seconds. You're not gonna get, you're not gonna get a specific timestamp out of this slider. It's it's not accurate. Uh, but we're gonna get close. So I said 13 seconds. That's 47 seconds total on the slider. Um, let's uh, let's do 39. Let's do 39 for now. Uh, to 44. 44 seconds. Click done. And let's open full screen back up. Uh, back it up a little bit. Alright. Let's see where we're at in the sink. I think I went too far. I might have gone too far. Nope. Yeah, I went like a few seconds further, but that's okay. See, it's pretty close now. Pretty close. It's not, it's not like precise, but it's close enough that your normal viewer isn't going to know any better. Unless they're really, really looking. Um, but yeah, this is how you sync it up. Uh, it's, it's just, it's difficult. It's free software, but it's difficult. Um, so we're gonna close this now. <sighs> okay, so now that your data has been imported and you have it on an overlay and you've gone through the headache of syncing everything up, uh, you want to export that data. You, you want to export the video, I mean. Um, and just a side note, you have other, like, things here, like, you can do to edit the video. Uh, again, map's not working. Uh, but you can add titles, soundtrack, uh, it looks like they have some stock sounds. <clears throat> That's all video editing stuff, I, I do that separate in, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, just cause it's easier to handle. Uh, so, anyways, uh, let us export, you click on export. And then you got your settings right here. Uh, it says 30 FPS. I'm gonna upscale that to 60 in my um, editing software. Uh, target quality, I set to max. Media settings, you don't really have to worry about. Branding. So branding by default, it's gonna have verb intro. And obviously this wasn't shot on a verb. This was shot on my cell phone. So we're just gonna do none. Also, I don't like branding. Um, that's not mine. <laughs> All right, so anyways, uh, pick your export location. Make sure you've got, um, make sure you got a lot of space um, where you're exporting to, because even though the file says 24 gigabytes, um, it's gonna use more than that uh, for the export process. So I am hooked up to one of my external um, hard drives right now. Uh, it's empty, so we just select that, and then click export. And, uh, oh file already exists uh, we can overwrite that because uh, I was just practicing for the demo so now it's exporting and this is gonna take forever this is something that I let run overnight while I sleep um, my it uses a lot of CPU power uh, I have a Ryzen 3600X that's a six core processor and it's clocked at about 4.1 gigahertz I believe uh, it's a fast processor but like 80 to like 100% is still being used on it when exporting video. Uh, so it's gonna take a few hours depending on your hardware. Um, so if you have good hardware, awesome. Uh, that's how you do it though. That's how you get the, uh, that's a basic gist of getting data uh, laid over your video. Um, 
it's gonna take a lot of experimenting and just a lot of messing around with the app until you get it just right but yeah just keep at it and uh, eventually you'll have some cool stuff to display on your videos